Brian and Kenzie in the morning. And Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101 with the Blackhawks song. Let's go. Woo. And uh, listen, Ticket Blitz Thursday active for another 37 minutes this hour. And that will be the word PAPA. So text 312-591-8300, P-A-P-A, to that number. And that's your chance to go see Ghost at the Allstate Arena Friday, August 1st. Tickets go on sale tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. And our great friends at Live Nation got these for you for Ticket Blitz Thursday every hour today. So Lauren coming up next will have that. And so will Brian Phillips. Leading right up to the Q101 Halloween pop-up which is tonight at the Cubby Bear. Finally here. We announced this a couple months ago. American authors at the Cubby Bear, free for adults, 21 and over. So you can go to Q101.com for all the information about it. And uh, we have the, the Halloween costume contest as well. But with American authors, they're going to play as them. Because that's who they are, American authors. And then they're going to come out and do the killer's hot fuss dressed as your favorite Halloween killers. We don't know what they're going to do. But the bands, this is a long tradition with Q101 of bands coming in and they look forward to going, we'll, we'll play, you know, our songs, but then mm-hmm. we want to do this thing. It's so fun. It is. It's really cool. So that's happening tonight. Plus, we're at, we're at your costume, 300 bucks for first place, but 200 for second, 100 for third. We have concert tickets, Q101 merch. It is going to be outrageously fun tonight, and we'll be your host there at the Cubby Bear, so come on out. It's crazy because you can, you know, go for free. And then leave with more money than you came with. If you win the costume contest, so How that's about awesome. That? That's amazing. Brian, I have a question for you. Oh, sure. Go ahead. So at the Cubby Bear tonight, I know what American authors are going to dress up as. They're going to be killers and then mm-hmm. play music from the killers. Yes. I know what I'm going to dress up as, and I'll reveal that in person at the Cubby Bear tonight, live and in living color. Can't wait. What are you going to be for Halloween? A little bit of a hiccup this year. Uh-huh. Um, not like not last many- year, by the way. <laughs> not as many costumes this year as there used to be. We could have just been replaying last year's episode of our show. It really was like last year. Kenzie saved me last year with the porch pirate costume that sadly I had to explain to people. I didn't like doing that. And one of my favorite Brian memories is going around the Cubby Bear last year for a Halloween pop-up and him getting progressively more annoyed as he had to explain his costume <laughs> to person after person. And he'd do like, he'd be like, all right, so I'm a pirate and I've got a, and I've got a package. What am I? And there would be a blank stare and then he'd just get frustrated. Oh, it's beautiful. It's so awesome. It was terrible. He, uh, he almost ended up as somebody charged with aggravated assault, actually, by the end of the night. That was almost his costume. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And see, the year before, I killed it with the Costco sample lady. Loved it. And that, everybody, I, I stole the show that night, okay? I'm not, I'm not being arrogant when I say that. You st- awarded yourself $300 for winning the <laughs> costume contest. But last year was disappointing, even though it was a good costume that Kenzie came up for me. It was really, I thought it was really good. Now, mind you, that wasn't my number one costume. This was Brian going, I have nothing three hours before going. So I was helping him quickly come up with something. And I liked it. Exactly. I liked the idea. So this year, uh, everybody said you should be Bane because I've been doing a lot of Bane voice stuff lately on the show. Yeah. You, you know, topical. You know. <laughs> Ten-year-old movie. <laughs> 12-year-old movie, I believe. That's right. And I thought there'd be a lot of Bane costumes easily available because, again, not super popular this year. They all moved. They're gone. A lot of people still want to be Bane for Halloween. He's They're, iconic, and he's misunderstood. Completely. There's none left. It's a complicated legacy of Bane. I know, Brian. They're not sold out. They're just not selling out. We can't grasp that concept. Well, I did ask Spirit Halloween, and they checked all the stores. And you're right. They just didn't have any. Yeah. Um, but other stores probably did, and Amazon had some. But they they said they'll get here November 12th, even with Prime. Well, they'll be ready for next year. <laughs> <laughs> order it. For the love of God, please order it now. So here's what I'm going to do. I decided this yesterday is the fine people at Spirit Halloween. I'm going to go to their store today to my location and I'm going to ask them what costume has sold the least this year. And then Bane. I'm... <laughs> maybe. <laughs> they go, it's funny, we have this Bane mask sitting back here. <laughs> we have 17 Bane costumes. Uh, and I'm going to wear that tonight. So I don't know what I'm going to be as of right now. When I get the Spirit Halloween, I will ask him and I'll, I'll, I'll reveal it tonight. Like, Case is going to reveal his costume tonight at the Cubby Bear. It hasn't been revealed to you yet. You can't tease this. It hasn't done. It has not. I'll walk in with whatever is the least... <laughs> Selling Halloween I costumes. Know, you're gonna be like Winnie the Pooh or something. <laughs> what do you think would be the least? Would it be Winnie the Pooh? Is there something else? I'm trying to think of something like as a guy, which would like what wouldn't have sold well. Yeah. Barney, I mean, Winnie the Pooh. Barney, you think's bad? Maybe Humpty Dumpty. Oh, if I'm wearing a Humpty Dumpty <laughs> costume tonight. Send help. 
Oh. Something's gone horribly wrong. Uh, let's see. My name is Home <laughs> <laughs> Um, I just put in like worst Halloween costumes. I'm trying to think of what. what would... <laughs> <laughs> the problem is, I don't know if they're going to have anything your size at the store. Well, that also be a full part of the comedy tonight with whatever I end up with. Um, I'm afraid it's going to be like a Space Force soldier costume. You know, the most <laughs> underrepresented branch of the military during Halloween. What if it's hot firemen? I think that sells very well. I think you got your hopes up that it's going to be hot firemen and it's yeah, not going to be that. He's show off the body. Well, no, I'm not going to wear booty shorts <laughs> and, I'm like, suspenders. Think you would make a really good kung fu panda. Oh, yeah. I hope they have that. Oh, that's not bad. I know you should have asked me, but we're three hours for the party again. There's going to be a spending limit, too. Sully. Sully would be good for you, big guy. Sully, who? From Monsters, Monsters, Inc. From Monsters, Inc. Oh, I didn't see Monsters, Inc. It's oh. one of the funniest movies of all time. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, no, it's like, it's in my Mount Rushmore of movies. Okay. You you could be the elephant from Sing. <laughs> it's a girl, but, you know, whatever. But it, doesn't, it, it doesn't matter. Whatever they say is the yeah. least selling costume, I'm wearing it tonight. Oh, Brian, I have bad news. Danielle just checked in from Chicago. She yeah. said, just left my local spirit Halloween, and they are really wiped out. Zero kids costumes at all. Well, I'm not getting a kid's costume. I know, but if the kid's <laughs> costumes are gone, the adult costumes might not have many you left. You have to wear a loincloth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. You know, I have a backup that doesn't require a costume. I have a backup in mind. What's the backup? Should I tell you? Yes. You should tell me the backup. Because if, if, if you have... wear the backup, it's going to be disappointing. I also have another backup for you, so go ahead. So here's my backup mm-hmm. that not everybody will understand. I'm going to have to explain it, too. <laughs> but all I do is wear a short sleeve white shirt. I wear my glasses that I have, but I put tape on them in the middle, and I carry a baseball bat. And I wear uh, like slacks, like men's slacks. Okay, and you would be a nerd? I would be defense from the movie Falling Down that Michael Douglas plays when he goes insane and starts beating okay. everybody <laughs> off and murdering people. Remember when you were mad last year when everyone asked what you were? Yeah. That's going to happen again. I think you're going to be White Urkel. Scene. No, because if I, the people that will get it will thank me to death for being defense from Falling Down, which is his name in the, in the movie. Um, what and, you could do, though. It's very easy. I can get that one done yeah. in a second. So another easy one, if yeah. there's no costumes, yes. is you grab an apple and a bunch of leaves, glue those to your junk, hold the apple. You could be Adam, like Adam and Eve. You're so happy to say this, aren't you? Because you're so excited to tell me to be Adam. It's going to be 55 degrees outside. Hey, it's not my fault you've waited till now to look at Halloween costumes. I'm trying to help you. Actually, shrink it would be better for that Adam yeah, costume. There's, there's leaves outside, oh, so the world's not out of leaves. You grab an apple. You're welcome. All right, so those are the backups. I'm going to be defense from falling down. Or I'm going to be Adam or whatever Spirit Halloween has sold the least of. Oh. If anybody works at a spirit, they want to let it, let it, let me know I right know, now. I really wish someone would text in like, yeah, we have a plethora of yeah, blank. Because I want to help because I think I'm going to be careful saying this because I don't, I assume those Spirit Halloween people are good people. Oh, salt of the earth. I what, think what so. What are you talking Some about? Some of my why favorites. You, why would you even question that? I just don't want to Google something and a news feed comes up and there's a scandal with Spirit Halloween. I think they're all great people, and they save us every year. They save Halloween, basically. Be- like, well, getting- and they're about to save Christmas because they're going to be Christmas spirit stores basically tomorrow. So exactly. Exactly. So I'm going to go in and, and help them out by buying the costume that's the least sold. Or I'll be the guy from Falling or Down. Or you could put on a really big dress if he misses Doubtfire. <laughs> <laughs> Put a pie in your face? <laughs> that sounds like a lot of work. It's really not. You could dunk your face in pie, which you're already going to do later. <laughs> <laughs> all right. The Cubby Bear tonight. All the information at Q101.com. I'll reveal the costume there. So will Case, and we'll all be on hand tonight at the Cubby Bear. Brian and Kenzie. On Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. As we're talking Halloween, I don't have a costume for tonight. I'm going to Spirit Halloween today and asking for the costume that's the least sold, and I will wear that tonight. I have some backup ideas. Boy, really awesome, our crew members, uh, Panda. Remember him? He comes to every, every year he comes. Oh, he has the best costume. And he's won, I think, two years in a yeah. row. He says, you want to borrow my Power Rangers suit? I do. I do? I do want to be a Power Ranger. That'd be incredible. It's going to be tight. Are you going to feel good about that? Um. Well, also, I know Panda, I'm much taller than him. Oh, So okay. I don't know how that's going to look. See, for me, everyone's just tall. Everyone's taller than me, so yeah. it's hard for me to distinguish that. I understand. You know what's funny? My favorite meme is this, like, kind of chunky baby, like, bent over looking sad going, 
when you paint yourself green and everyone thinks you're Shrek for Halloween instead of the Incredible Hulk. Oh, God. And that movie just reminded me of. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be confusing. Uh, Fred's checking in. Uh, Fred, ahoy, what's on your mind? Ahoy, I think you should do two pants guy. I've done it twice. So you just wear two pairs of jeans. So you could do the easy way, which you wear like one higher than the other, and you're two pants guy, right? And you're rocking it. White t-shirt, two pants guy. Or <laughs> you... Oh, wait, 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 stop, <laughs> yeah. stop, stop. A fan favorite two wait, pants wait. guy. Is that a care? Who's two pants guy? Oh, well, I just didn't have a costume one year, and we were, you know, partying <laughs> Wicker Park. It's fun time. And I just put on two pairs of jeans. I was like, oh, uh, yeah, I'm two pants guy. But did, and then you, was, wait, wait, did people ask you what you are? And you just said, well, I'm two pants guy, duh. Yeah. Uh-huh. And so the other, the, the more <laughs> difficult way would be you wear jeans, right? Yeah. And then you get another pair of jeans. Right. Turn them upside down, a hole in the crotch, and that you put your head through that. And then you put your arms through the legs. So I wear pants up top as a shirt and pants on the bottom. Yeah, up mm. top and bottom. Party on top, party on the bottom. Gene, two pants guy. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knows two I'm pants. telling you, it's a legit thing. You don't even have to go shopping. You just you get you got scissors and you got jeans. So I have go home and do it. A variation of this a little bit, as I have seen people put pants on their arms and like over their head and they cut a hole for the head and then they step into a shirt so it kind of looks like you're in a handstand oh, all okay. night. Oh, okay. So, yeah. There you go. Lame. Yeah. <laughs> Lame. Oh, yeah obviously. Two pants guy is way more I mean, high. that's no two pants guy, no, but not, okay. Friend. No, no, it is not. Sorry, no, it is not. <laughs> what is this, amateur hour? Uh, <laughs> appreciate your input, Fred. I'll no cons- problem. I'll consider it. Anytime. I'll consider it. Thank you, man. Have that guy on hold through the show tomorrow. <laughs> Every show we do. I'm going to have him join the show. He's going to get my contract. <laughs> Good Lord. Yeah, it's Two Pants Guy. Duh. It's Two Pants Guy. Uh, text in your takeaways right now. 312-591-8300. What? What's, your, what's your taking what? away from today's show with Brian and Kenzie on Q101? The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. The Brian and Kenzie Show on Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Kenzie brought up this morning, and I, I I, didn't understand it, but I didn't Google it. I want Kenzie to explain it to me, and I don't know if Case knows what these are, or I'm sure you know what they are. Maybe I'm in, just not in the know of what a boo bucket is. <laughs> What's you a, don't know what a boo bucket is? I don't know, and you said it was stressful for some reason. Okay, well, buckle up for hell when Harper gets older. <laughs> Well, I don't want to hear that. Okay. Uh, I, I'm going to skip I mean, the boo I'm bucket. Sure it started, I'm sure it started, started as a nice thing that people have now ruined. But anyways, you get booed, which is very sweet. That's what happens. You get booed. What do you mean? So, you're, so I'm carrying you, a boo so bucket. Somebody usually puts like a, some type of bucket, like almost like a trick-or-treat style bucket. They leave it on your front porch, and it's full of stuff like candy, whatever, Halloween pencils, Silly string, whatever, okay? Okay. Almost kind of like a stocking, right? Like think stocking stuffers or what's in boo buckets. So that all sounds good so far to me. Right, but you get booed. But then guess what happens? Whoa, 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 hold up. <laughs> what do you mean you get booed? Like a player getting booed for striking no, no, out? No, they <laughs> run up. It's called getting booed. You've been booed. So they drop the bucket off. They like ring your doorbell or knock and then they run away. It's like cute. So you open your door, you have a thing there. You don't know, quote unquote, who it's from. So let me slow down here a little bit. Yeah. So so you don't have a boo bucket on your porch. You put it on someone else's porch. You put it on somebody else's porch. And you, you have, boo people. And there's all good stuff in it. And it's good stuff. So, so far, everything sounds great. Yeah, it sounds sweet. The problem is there's just always returning the boo pressure and that's not supposed to be the case i'm going to clear the boo bucket's name right now you're supposed to just pass it on okay so it's like now go boo someone because you've been booed but we got booed three times this year three okay and that's very 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 sweet and the kids were excited every time you've already been booed before halloween three times okay it happens usually prior to halloween everyone's busy on halloween they're trick-or-treating you can get booed the month of october (laughs) okay the problem is ridiculous to me okay I got booed again last night. Oh. Okay? And it's probably my husband's fault, but he puts a lot of pressure on me to immediately boo the person back that booed us. Do you know who booed you? Well, you're not supposed to, but we have a ring doorbell. So I'm like, oh, there they go. Uh, got it, neighbors. Oh. We have a ring doorbell, so you watch it. So uh, some kids wear masks, so you can't tell, but I'm still like, okay, I know who you are. I, you know, Tristan's best friend got it locked in. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know what's happening. He wears a Frankenstein mask every day. Uh, yeah. I, I know, know who you are. I yeah. know him. <laughs> got it, got it. So... 
my husband always puts pressure on me, and that's not what the boo bucket is supposed to be a passed on thing. You get booed. Like, if you get booed, then you boo someone else, and then they boo someone. You're supposed to, like, pass it along. It's very nice. You're passing on. You're paying it forward, if you will. Yes, that's the concept of the boo bucket. Mm -hmm. The problem is my husband thinks that we have to, and he puts a lot of pressure on me, boo back whoever boos us. Okay. Because he's like, do you understand? People complain about it. He puts all this on me. Wait, 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 wait. Do people complain about this? <laughs> I, think, I think there's some parents out there, not all of them, that get dramatic. Like, you know, we've booed them every year and we've never gotten booed back. Like, so that stuff happens. At the soccer game or the PTA yeah. meeting or whatever. I it's haven't like... booed the bitch and now we're a problem. <laughs> God, I'm just trying to understand the culture, so, yeah. I'm, so I'm slowing things no, down. Not everybody likes that. A lot of people understand the pay it forward. Like, if I booed someone and they didn't boo me back, I'm not going to be mean about it. But there's parents Are out you there. sure about that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I just, I know it's enough. <laughs> So last night, uh, we got booed again. And I swear to God, I started cursing because my husband's like, we got to go boo him tonight. I'm like, I have to come up with a whole basket in the next, I want to go to bed. Got it. I had to come up with a boo basket at like 1030 at night. I swear to God, so he could boo him back in time because tonight we're not going to have time tonight because it's Halloween. I'm like, stop booing us. Okay, so they've happened all through the month, and yeah. you thought it was all over because it's night before Halloween yeah, at this like, point. Yeah, we're probably done. We're probably okay. safe, and we get booed again. It's unbelievable. Stop are you, it. Are you sure you're not going to complain to anybody about this? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just so I, I, my it's just it's my husband who's just like we need another basket now. I'm like, what do I look like to you, an elf? I don't know how to produce all these baskets. This is not at all what I thought it was. So I'm yeah. glad you explained this. I'm glad I live in an apartment building. So I don't have to deal with this because oh, no, no one's putting boo buckets on front of our door. And they're buzzing to get in? Yeah. <laughs> I'd call the cops on somebody if they did that. No, yeah. it's, honestly, it's super sweet. It's my husband ruining it by making it like so much pressure to deliver the amount of baskets that get dropped off. It's stressful. Well, here's a recommendation from 847, Mark from Desplaines. We used to boo people in high school and put dog poop in the bag, Ma Billy Madison style. That's not fun. That's not fun. That's not as cute as it is now. No, you made it sound really positive. No, well, it is. That's not what the kids are doing. Okay. So, Kenzie, I have a question for yes. you. yeah. And I don't want to open up a whole can of worms here. Uh -huh. By the way, did you know what a boo bucket was? I had no idea. Okay. Yeah. Well, welcome. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to open up a whole can of worms. Yeah, go ahead. But if your husband is insistent on booing people back... Yeah. Can't he do it? No, it's a fantastic question, Case. I feel like I'm missing something. No, no, no. You've asked a wonderful question. Uh, One that I've asked, uh -huh. in fact. What was the answer to that question? He doesn't know how to put together a good boo basket. Uh, That's what I was told. I was told he not, he's not, it's not going to look good, and boy... Is he a jerk? Because when I made him make one, it looked like crap. It did look like he was putting dog crap on someone's board. It was so bad. And I think it was on purpose. Because now it's just embarrassing. Because they're going to know it's coming from us. Okay, Natalie from 847. Another 847 uh, has a recommendation. My sister-in-law had a sign on her front door saying they have already been booed. So don't do it. Not saying don't we do it again. That. Yeah, they have already booed signs. We did it. I think the problem was is that people did it for Tristan and Marino. Mm. So they had buckets with some baby stuff in it. So you can't be like, let me just pass this along to the <laughs> other house. Because it's like, well, there's a bunch of baby stuff in it. I can't go. Like some of them, you know, obviously it's copy and paste. But mm. there was like um, like those little squeeze apple sauces and sure. stuff, and stuff. So I think that no matter what, people continued to boo. So Ivan in 708 checked that and maybe has put a lid on this whole thing. He says... I'm glad I live in a normal neighborhood. <laughs> LOL. Well, this isn't going on. Oh. <laughs> what neighborhood is this not happening? I want to move. You want to move to 708? There yes. you go. That's it. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Time for Cases Movie Reviews. And maybe it's unusual we're doing it on a Thursday. We usually do them on Fridays at 8 o'clock. So maybe you've never heard the review. It started close to a year ago when I got really sick and tired of making movie references in case the producer hasn't seen any real movies. He's a, quote, TV guy, is what he says he is. You don't have to say it with that tone. <laughs> Listen, I love TV, too, but I love movies. And now I'm really happy because he's seen things like Pulp Fiction, Shawshank Redemption, Braveheart, uh, Roadhouse, mm. Varsity Blues. Mm -hmm. Great, classic, iconic movies, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he's now seen those. But in the last six weeks, it was all horror movies as yep. Kenzie laid out a whole plan for the horror themes that he would see. Yes, absolutely. In case, how, have you been enjoying your horrific experience? 
<laughs> what? <laughs> what did you just say? Like it's been horrific. <laughs> Like that. It was like a homework assignment. So we did The Shining. <laughs> we did Saw. We did Scream. We did Friday the 13th. We did Nightmare on Elm Street. We did The Blair Witch Project, which you guys voted on last week. And now, concluding our spooktacular month and a half, it is time to review Halloween. That's right. That is right. Uh, do you want to play the trailer to get things started? Let's do that. I want to make something clear before you go on, and we'll see how Case rates this movie. 96% on Rotten Tomatoes. Good to know. It's one of the highest ratings you can get. Good and to know. Let's go back to 1978 with the trailer of the original Halloween. There's been so many movies since, so this was the original. Halloween night. A small American town. 15 years ago. <laughs> Michael? night he came home oh not a lot, not a lot going on i mean it's more visual uh, that trailer and certainly a movie well, <laughs> no no but trailers often have a lot of words <laughs> in say, them i'm just defending the trailer <laughs> but also creepy because how halloween trailers used to be with the movie trailer voice guy and i want to make clear that uh tiffany and Cherville just checked in and said, if Case gives us a bad review, <laughs> I'm coming to the Halloween pop-up tonight at the Cubby Bear as Michael Myers, and uh, he doesn't, he won't see it coming is what she's saying. I'm paraphrasing. Wow. Yeah. Tiffany and Sherville, good to know. Mm. I'm also glad I watched this movie because for the longest time, I would confuse Michael Myers with Mike Myers. Fair. With, <laughs> with Michael Moore. Mm -hmm. I couldn't... The, Michael Myers, Austin Powers, and Michael Moore were all kind of the same thing to me, and mm. I'd always have to process who they were when somebody said their name. Yeah. So I'm glad I can... I finally know the difference between all three of them. Okay, well, let's get right to it. Halloween, the original. There's, a, there's about 10 or 13 movies of remakes and reboots and sequels. So this is the original with the yogurt lady, Jamie Lee Curtis. Oh, that's Jeez. right. That's right. So I knew Jamie Lee Curtis as the, the yogurt lady. And also, Brian, the song that you're playing right now. Yes. You play this on the show all the time. And you had no idea. I didn't know what it was from. <laughs> God, right there off the I bat. I turn on the movie. I go, oh, my God. It's like I'm listening to the show. This is awesome. <laughs> you're like, they stole this from us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we can't have anything. I thought Brian was playing the keyboards during the show. What kind of season is this? <laughs> You're like, can they do that? I was like, man, I thought that was our intellectual property. So that was fun. I was like, I know Activia Lady, and I know this Halloween song, so I'm pretty locked in from the jump, right? Oh, right, there you go. One of, and let me preface this with, I loved this movie. Let me let me preface it with okay. that. I love this movie. I'll, I'll jump right out and say it. I'll rip the Band-Aid off. Well, she's, Tiffany's not driving in from Cherville. She, come to our party. The yeah, I hope she's there tonight. just not to kick my ass. Right. One of the things that I've noticed throughout all of these horror movies that I've watched, because I really had no basis of horror prior to doing Kinsey's homework assignment. One of the things that I've now noticed is that when I'm not watching a horror movie, I associate nudity in movies as one of the greatest things that there is. Somebody gets naked, I get all excited. Mm. In a horror movie, <laughs> somebody gets naked, I know they're about to die. Yeah, It's so unfortunate. Think about all the nudity we've consumed over the last few weeks. They're all dead as soon as their clothes come Big off. boner killer, huh? I, It really is. That's half the reason I watch movies. Yeah. You're like, I have to do this fast. <laughs> it's very sad. I only have a minute. <laughs> very, very sad. It is. So that is, Halloween is yet another movie that is plagued by nudity, that is ruined by murder, which is unfortunate. I don't, uh, obviously... <laughs> Condone murder. It's so a real big not, bummer. You're not in those smut films or whatever they're called, right? Snuff. Snuff. <laughs> smut films are a different kind yeah. of film. It's a different uh, genre. Smut films, yes. Yeah. Snuff films, no. Snuff. Ah, thin line. Different things, snuff it's films. It's one line. word wrong. Yeah. You end up in a totally different category. He's one letter off, a couple letters off, actually. <laughs> Halloween is, is a really interesting movie. It's interesting because I would say of the 90 minutes that it's on, for the first 45 or 50 minutes, nothing really happens. And it's creepy. Yeah. It is creepy how little happens because just from a basic understanding of what movies are and my my very little knowledge of Halloween going into it, I go, some of these kids are going to have to die. I'm not saying they should, but some of these kids are going to have to die. <laughs> well, some of them should. <laughs> some, of them should. Hey. Uh, some, of these, some of the kids are a little annoying. More on that later. Yeah. <laughs> Some of these kids are going to have to die. In the first 50 minutes of this movie, it's just Michael Myers, not Michael Moore. I almost said Michael Moore. Michael Myers walking around, being creepy, looking in windows, 
but he's not doing anything. It's really not until the kids get naked that he starts to kill. Huh. There's a lesson. There's a lesson for you out there, kids. Kids, keep your damn clothes on. (laughs) Another interesting thing about this movie, one of the ones that I watched previously over the summer for this show was Dazed and Confused. Right. A movie that takes place in the 70s. And as I talked about in that movie, it became very apparent to me that kids in the 70s had nothing going on. (laughs) They had no hobbies. All they did was drive around and smoke bad weed. That was the whole hey, 70s. Hey, they were working hard and babysitting for their money. That's right. That's They're right. Yeah. slammed with work. <laughs> just because they, they didn't have your phone to go <laughs> make bets on DraftKings on, it doesn't mean they had nothing to do. I don't know. These kids in the 70s had nothing to do. And this was another example of kids in the 70s having nothing to do other than drive around. So offensive. Well, how is it offensive? Because a lot went on before you were born, and they had fun, and they weren't depressed. <laughs> and sorry they got killed when they got naked, but other than that, there was a lot happening. My, my brothers, I've heard this from people above me. Okay. I've heard about it. I've heard there was a lot of fun going on. I don't know. This whole movie is about kids driving around, smoking bad weed, having no hobbies or ambitions, and then they have to babysit, and then they get naked, and then they all die. And it's... <laughs> It's a very compelling story, (laughs) but I'm just letting everybody know who hasn't seen Halloween, that's all it is. It's a bunch of teenagers who have no desires or motivations. Mm. They get naked, and then they die. Mm. For a little bit, it's almost like Michael Myers actually really cares about the children. Mm -hmm. He's tired of these bad babysitters. The babysitters are horrific. And again, that's kind of, I'm not saying all these kids deserve to die, but a few of them could have been taught a lesson. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe without murder. (laughs) In a way, maybe he's just pro children. It's a toss up, you know. (laughs) Also, I don't know if you even caught this, but it took place in the fictional Illinois town of Haddonfield, Illinois. I did cast that because it said it on the screen, and uh, I went, oh, it's yeah. Illinois. Well, oh, I want to hear more. I want to get to your rating, but what, we've got uh, a couple more points on Halloween. Why don't we put a pin in it? Okay. Come back, get your final thoughts, because uh, Tiffany and Cherville are still really concerned that you're not going to give it a good rating. I so, liked the movie. You liked it, but so far, you said they had nothing to do, they got naked, and they got murdered. What is incorrect about that? It's more just like cliff notes. You just tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I've said no lies thus far. Okay, when we come back here in uh, just a few minutes, we'll give his rating on the final Halloween movie review the case has done in the last six weeks. And it's the, it's the pinnacle. It's a 96 Rotten Tomatoes rating of the original Halloween movie. That's right. I'll tell you my favorite part of the movie, too. Oh, I want to hear that. That's coming up here in six minutes. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. Okay, we're going to finish up Case's movie review of Halloween. We have text coming in about Case's movie review of Halloween. And Kenzie, what do you have there? Oh, we got a text. Uh, 708 is like, hey, I love Case's movie reviews, but the one thing, you know, during all this that's missing, I want to know what he was scared. Like, was mm-hmm. he scared watching Halloween? That's a good point because obviously we all joke around, but you're kind of a big baby about this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot deny. Yeah. Great question. Of the seven horror movies that I watched, and I, I, I went The Shining, Saw, Scream, Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, Blair Witch, and now Halloween. Halloween was the scariest one that I saw. Really? It had my biggest jump scare, and that was when one of the doobie-smoking teenagers with nothing to do. <laughs> yes. You sound like you're 90. <laughs> a doobie-smoking teenager. It's a blasphemous movie he had to watch. But in case you're new to the show, Case is 25 years old, okay? That's... <laughs> What sucks is that we were trying to get somebody young, and he just. <laughs> we still need to find somebody young for the show. A doobie smoking teenager. <laughs> Oh. All right, go ahead. The part that scared you. Doobie smoking teenagers, she's in the car. Yeah. And it's the first person that Michael Myers kills as an adult, and he comes in behind her yeah. and chokes her in the car. Yes. Biggest jump scare that I've had because there is almost a beauty to these old movies where they can't make violence look pretty. So it just looks like he's strangling a woman in the car, and it's really violent, and it scared the crap out of me. And I now, like, I don't. I don't ever think like, oh man, I wonder if somebody's watching me in my house. But now I'm going to think when I get into a car, God, I hope there's not a guy here to kill me. Oh, look in the back seat before you drive. I guess. I do that that often. That is the thing about like this particular movie is how gruesome it is when he kills people. It's Mm -hmm. just very like, you can hear the knife going in and out. I'm like, did he actually just murder her for the scene? (laughs) That's what was great about the 70s and 80s horror movies. There was no, you know, CGI, no no way to make it cleaner. You had to kill people. It looked so real. That's why they were scarier. That's what I loved about Friday the 13th was I thought there was a grittiness to it that I really liked. And Halloween is a very similar thing. Again, Halloween was a great movie. Uh, By the way, you mentioned uh, driving. 
Uh, 708 checked in, and he said that it's interesting that when Michael Myers is driving around, he obeys all the traffic laws. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever play Grand Theft Auto and after you steal a car just for fun, you like follow all of the oh, traffic lights? Of course. Yeah, exactly. Same thing with Michael Myers. That's super funny. Okay, so we wrap it up. Is there anything else you wanted to say about the movie? I thought it was great. Uh, you know, Friday the 13th was the best one that I watched of all of these. I want to now go and watch all of the Friday the 13th. I love those. I thought Halloween was really strong, though, because, again, the story was interesting. The violence was there. It was a little scary, but it wasn't, it wasn't gory. It wasn't gross. It was just a nice, thrilling, suspenseful movie for 90 minutes. Also, 90 minutes, a big plus. God, Not he loves movies overstated. that are short. Didn't overstay its welcome. Wasn't a two and a half hour ordeal where I had to get up and stretch halfway through. <laughs> I don't know how to rank this, though. Do masks? We, masks? Do we do doobies? Because these are a bunch of doobie smoking teenagers. If you want to do doobies. Virgins? Yeah. Virgins? No, we'll do, we'll do masks. Make it babysitters? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I feel comfortable giving this a solid seven and a half masks out of ten. Okay. This, for my standards, is a horror classic. Brian and Kenzie in the morning and Chicago's alternative all day. Q101.